any of you to have any questions about anything. Um, if you want to come up and uh, do some pots and pans and mop the floor, we're not going to stop you. So, and this is Jenny Mass, who actually she's now Murphy. She got married here uh, about a month ago. So, you know, through centuries, people have been trying to figure out if the food can actually cause uh, the aphrodisiacs. Uh, scientifically speaking, they say that. Uh, the aroma actually will stimulate uh, the body more than a taste will or a food actual item will. Uh, oysters, on the other hand, uh, oysters are a very unique item in the fact that um, oysters are, they can be both male and female. We also have uh, some artichoke bottoms. Uh, artichokes also have a, a great uh, history, of course. Artichokes uh, during the Roman time were hugely popular. <clears throat> There's a bunch of different ways you could do this. Uh, we're actually going to take the oyster liqueur, we call it the oyster li liquor. When you shuck oysters, now for this one you can actually use jarred oysters, um, uh, which would be perfectly fine to come in a plant sized container. The Native Americans knew that, the Europeans, because their water was so cold. Um, they would spawn just throughout the year. So they take up that brine taste and you taste it. I mean, there's nothing, you know, it just, it is what it is. I mean, it holds those nutrients and vitamins, whereas the average fruit and vegetable, as you guys know, travels 2,500 miles until it gets to your table. Uh, so how fresh can that be? You know, they're picking it in California. They pick it, they put it in a warehouse. The next day they come, they box it. You know, maybe it gets onto a truck, they pick it, and then sit in your refrigerator for a little bit. Now. You can certainly use a raw egg because now we can buy pasteurized eggs, raw eggs. So if you want to make a homemade mayonnaise base, this is a, uh, a mayonnaise base uh, salad dressing with the with true Caesar. Uh, in holidays, you know, the heat and the whip makes the egg yolks hold the butter in suspension. So, but the true force of any emulsion, you guys can, you can emulsify anything. Garlic and some lemon juice, and Jay can start mixing this together. I'll go ahead and add our Worcester sauce. Certain things being in place of salt. I mean, the very first true type of sauce. And so, Worcestershire really kind of dates back. Worcestershire uh, is something that uh, came from basically India as a, as a variation. Romaine is traditional with this, but you can use any kind of uh, greens. Um, so, you know, and like we talk about the fact that, you know, Caesar was actually truly came about in Tijuana in the, in the 20s, you know, there were variations of it, you know, long before that. Uh, a borio is the uh, traditional risotto rice, huge rice fields in Arkansas and Louisiana and Texas. And I, all I did was, this is a plum tomato, any tomato, I'm just peeling off the flesh part uh, because I'm going to dice this, it's going to be part of our stuffing here, and it is the sweetest of all shellfish because of that. Now that's true lobster. Uh, second sweetest is crab, and then you have shrimp. So everybody thinks filet is beef tenderloin, uh, beef filet. Filet is a cut. That's like tornadoes is a cut. Uh, Chateaubriand is a cut. It's a, it's a terminology in culinary school where you study a cut. So, you know, cutting it up too much, what I want to do is butterfly it. This could be mushrooms, this could be, you don't like tomatoes, uh, it doesn't have to be tomatoes, it could be whatever you want it to be. I am going to add a little bit, a little bit of pepper, I have some salt on my hand so show it with your luck. And I'm going to roll this up. Okay. So we want a slip knot here. Um, and again, reason for tying something down, one twist, that's it. One twist, I slide it under. And you created another slip knot. Again, I'm doing one more. Just a twist, that's all it is. Just one twist. I'm telling you, if I could do this, you guys, I couldn't get a sew a button if my life depended on it, but I can do this. So when I get this smoking, smoking hot, uh, I can sear off that meat. Um, yeah, I would probably stuff it with crab meat or I would stuff it, I wouldn't worry about lobster tail, I'd stuff it with shrimp. For the wine we had with it. Okay, uh, first and foremost, everybody enjoy that the food and wine pair. Yes. Okay. Right. 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 Completely dissolved. You just want to suspend it in the water. Yeah.
No, you can, yeah, as long as you mix it back up. If you sit there and then the corn starts sinks to the bottom of the water, just stir it back up before you pour it into your boiling liquid. Right. Two types of chocolate, a semi-sweet, and uh, both good dark chocolate. Let's bring this to a, a boil. I've got a little bit of amaretto. That's going to be added to this. It's going to all go in together. And a little bit of butter. And this is a typical ganache. And all you're doing is taking pure, great, dark, uh, semi-sweet chocolate and just melting it. And then uh, literally we would spoon it into all you know, way after the 1700s. I mean, basically from the 1800s. So even after the Spaniards took chocolate back, um, after they you know, basically cleared out Central America from the natives. Uh, they took chocolate back. It was an instant hit, but it was still done. The world was maple syrup, and that was way up north. This was Central America.